Hey guys, it's Max. In this video, I'm gonna be comparing two brand new machines that are very capable in terms of video editing. Uh, I have the 2019 i9 eight core iMac and the really new 2019 i9 eight core MacBook Pro. So we have a refresh of both the laptops and both the iMacs. Uh, they're very powerful. I've done actually dedicated videos on both these machines. So I compared the 2019 MacBook to the 2018 version, if you guys wanna check that out. And I've done a bunch of videos on the iMac, which is a phenomenal machine. I compared it to the iMac Pro, which I got some really surprising results. I also compared it to the previous iMac, and I did a graphics comparison, so I'll link those down in the video description below. As always, we're gonna be looking at a wide variety of different codecs, so I can kind of find something, give you the information that you need for your particular use case, and we're gonna look at Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve, and Premiere Pro. Now, if you guys appreciate all the time, effort, and money that goes into making comparisons like this, it definitely is really resource and time intensive, please hit that like button, and then if you guys are gonna buy either one of these, I will have links in the video description, and that definitely helps me out to be able to keep making videos like this. Now, I know that some of you guys may be already typing and you're in the comments saying, you know, this is an easy choice. If you need the portability, go with the MacBook. Uh, if you don't need the portability, go with the iMac. It has a larger display and it has some more powerful internal components. And uh, you're absolutely right. But for a lot of us, it's a very difficult choice with uh, actually myself included. Uh, you would like to have the portability. You know, sometimes you travel, maybe you have an older MacBook Pro that you'd rather replace. And maybe you have an iMac and you just wanna replace that with one new MacBook Pro, but you really are concerned by the performance. Are you gonna get the necessary performance to be able to do that? And for some people that have been using iMacs for years, you'd like to get the portability, you know, it, you don't need it, but you would like to have it if the machine is capable. So that's what we're gonna be answering and you would actually be surprised by the results. In some cases, the MacBook Pro is actually about twice as fast. It really depends on what program you're using and uh, what codec you're working with. So there's advantages to both of them. In some cases, three times as fast and in other cases, twice as fast. So a very interesting result and I'll explain why we're getting those once we get to them. Now, the price tags are actually identical with these two machines. Here's a full specifications. Neither of them are cheap, they're higher end configurations, but they're definitely more affordable than the new cheese grater from Apple. Both of them have ninth generation Intel processors, which actually run cooler and quieter than all of the previous iMacs and MacBook Pros that I've tested. These guys are seriously fairly cool running, uh, which is really nice. Along with that, we have Vega graphics for both, 20 versus 48. Uh, they both have 512 gigabytes of SSD. And as far as RAM, we have 32 gigabytes for the MacBook and actually 64 gigabytes with the iMac. And with the iMac, you can actually replace the RAM yourself. I have an easy step-by-step -step guide on how to do that. And you can save actually up to 680 bucks or you can actually get 128 gig for the same price that Apple charges for 64. So make sure you guys go check that out. And now let's jump into performance. Starting off with Geekbench 4, the iMac is about 10% faster or a 10% higher score, but in single core, the iMac is about 15% uh, higher as far as the score. Now you may have not been expecting that because their clock speeds as far as the turbo boost are very, very close, uh, but the iMac has a better cooling solution for its CPU, so it actually hits a much higher uh, uh, clock speed for the single core tasks than the MacBook Pro does. So the MacBook Pro will not sustain anywhere near 4.8 gigahertz. Now Geekbench 4 does not max out all your cores and doesn't push your CPU to the limit. For that, we have to take a look at Cinebench. And I'll start off with R15, where we get about a 35% higher, faster score with the new iMac. And then in Cinebench R20, which is a new one, we get roughly just over 30% faster score. Uh, that is interesting, of course, because they're both eight core models. Um, uh, they both have you know fairly good speeds, but because of the cooling solution, once again, the iMac can run faster for a long period of time. All right, we got that thing back on, so you guys don't have to look at a black screen. <laughs> it's always the energy saving mode. So what about graphics? Of course, we have a Vega 48. That means 48 compute scores compared to Vega 20. And this guy has four gigabytes of video memory. This one has eight gigabytes. While well, testing out both OpenCL and Metal and Geekbench score, um, the iMac actually gets about twice the score, basically double the score. So that is a pretty good difference. And we're gonna be seeing the result of that as we get into video editing. Now, before I show you where the MacBook Pro is twice as fast as the iMac and the cases where the iMac is three times as fast, I have to give a shout out to our sponsor for this video, Audible. 
Visit audible.com slash max y or text max y to 500 500 to start your free 30 day trial and get a free audiobook. Audible is the leader in audiobooks with basically anything that you would want to listen to. And I've actually paid for Audible for more than a few years now, and it actually literally changed my life. Like many of you, it's really hard for me to find the time to read, but being able to listen to an audiobook while I'm doing chores, commuting, at the gym, or even working is amazing. I would highly recommend for everyone to listen to books like Gary Vee's Crush It, Why Now is the Time to Cash In on Your Passion. Listening to that along with other great audiobooks is what finally shifted my mind and allowed me to become a full-time filmmaker, and that is one of the best decisions that I have ever made. Start listening with a 30-day Audible trial and your first audiobook plus two Audible originals are free. Visit audible.com slash maxy or text maxy to 500, 500 So now let's jump into video editing. I'm gonna start out with Final Cut and Bruce X, which is gonna test the rendering capabilities of the graphics. And the MacBook Pro gets 40, takes 42 seconds, whereas the iMac takes just 19 seconds. And this is just using the graphics. And that's showing us that the graphics is more than twice as fast in the iMac. Now let's take a look at stabilizing a 20 second 4K clip. And in Final Cut, the iMac is about 30% faster, even though they're both lightning fast. And DaVinci Resolve, the iMac is actually twice as fast. And once again, here it's leveraging the graphics, not the processor. And in Premiere Pro, it takes much longer, but the iMac is about 20% faster. Here it's just using a single core of the processor. Now it's gonna start to get a little bit interesting. This is a five minute 4K project with two LUTs and film grain applied. This is H.264 footage, 4K from the A7S II. And in Final Cut, our score is exactly the same. I'll let you know why. But if we jump down to DaVinci Resolve, it's actually over 50% faster, and the same thing goes for uh, Premiere Pro. The iMac is over 50% faster. Before I tell you why, I need to point out a couple things. First off, the timeline performance is excellent with both these machines. They're both very capable. We have Vega graphics, we have 8-core processors. Uh, so using this and editing this kind of footage doesn't push either machine to its limits. Now, the next thing I want to point out is that Premiere Pro is now catching up to Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve with the latest update. They made some big improvements to H.264 exporting and some timeline performance for that codec, finally. And as you see, the numbers are much closer than they were in the past. Uh, so DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro will actually use more of your CPU uh, when you, they're exporting, especially Premiere Pro. Resolve pushes kind of both. But for Final Cut, we saw no difference in performance. And that's because it's really relying on the QuickSync chip to export this. And they're both nine, gen nine generation processors. And as far as the CPU and graphics, it's not maxing out either one of these. So neither of them are kind of limited, thus the results are identical. Getting even more weird, let's take a look at H.265 or HEVC codec. This is 8-bit and also a five-minute project with two LUTs film grain applied. And here in Final Cut, the MacBook Pro is more than twice as fast. And the same thing goes for DaVinci Resolve. And in Premiere Pro, it actually flips and the iMac is about 35% faster. So what gives? Well, there's one difference between these two machines, something that the MacBook Pro has that the iMac doesn't, and that is the T2 chip. That chip does a lot of things. It controls your SSD, controls your audio, and your webcam makes the quality better there, uh, but it also can speed up H.265 encoding. So DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut, you see the times are really fast. Um, so it's actually using that chip. And because the iMac does not have one of those T2 chips, it actually has to use Intel QuickSync. And uh, because of that, uh, it's a lot slower. Now in the timeline with 8-bit footage, they're both super fast. They have no issues. Uh, so there's no difference there only when you're rendering. Now Premiere Pro will actually, I don't think it uses either one of those. I think it's more of just CPU or maybe it's using QuickSync, but as you guys can see, it is quite a bit slower than the other two. And because of that, um, you know, the iMac has a little bit faster hardware. So we're seeing a speed difference there. Next, let's look at 10-bit H.265 or HEVC. This is a new codec that's starting to get very popular. And as we see here in Final Cut, the iMac is actually about 55% faster. And then in Premiere Pro, the score is about the same, but the, the time is actually much, much shorter. 
So Premiere Pro is using some kind of hardware encoding. I'm not sure what's happening. At least that's what it seems like uh, because it's pushing everything to its limits and it's much faster and the results are basically the same. So I have to guess it's mainly the CPU. It's not really uh, limited by graphics in this case. But for Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve, in this case, it's pushing everything, <laughs> the graphics, the CPU, and that's why we're seeing such a big difference in times. I mean, if I was exporting HDR with one of those programs, I would definitely want the iMac because of the faster CPU and the much faster graphics. Now let's get into the big boy codex. I'm starting off with Canon Cinema Raw Lights from the C200. And here we're exporting a five minute project with color corrections and a LUT applied. And in Final Cut, the iMac is more than twice as fast, actually about twice as fast, and DaVinci Resolve is more than twice as fast, and Premiere Pro is about 40% faster. Uh, so that is a huge, huge difference. And the main reason why we're seeing such a big difference is because the graphics card is the limitation in Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve. So the graphics card cannot keep up with the eight core processor in the MacBook Pro. It needs better graphics. So in this test, there actually wasn't much difference when you compared it to the six core previous MacBook Pro because the CPU is not the limitation, it's the graphics. And that was a trend that we were seeing, whereas the iMac has the Vega 48 graphics. Now in Premiere Pro, it was about 40% faster. That's because it's more CPU bound as far as the workload, it doesn't push the graphics as far, uh, and so you know we're not seeing that much of a difference. Now along with that, what's very important is the timeline performance. Actually probably more important with this codec than the previous one. The previous ones, both these can handle them very well, uh, but with raw footage, it's much more difficult. And the MacBook Pro can actually handle uh, C200 footage with a lot of color corrections applied at 30 frames per second, full resolution and Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve. That is actually very impressive. And the only reason why I could do that is the Vega 20 graphics. The 560X cannot keep up. And Metal, Apple's Metal API really helps out. So Windows machines don't work as well, even if they have uh, the same kind of a CPU inside. Now the iMac on the other hand can handle at 60 FPS full resolution in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. And that is awesome. It's just as good as the iMac Pro. So if you want to edit 6K, you know, raw footage, you can, or if you're going to be slowing stuff down or doing multicam, this guy is a powerhouse, as you guys can see. If I didn't absolutely need the portability and I was working with raw footage, definitely you need to be buying the iMac. Now in Premiere Pro, the results are a little bit different because it does not handle this footage as well. So uh, if you're looking at full 4K resolution, both of these stutter like crazy. You have to drop them down to about half resolution. And in that case, uh, the iMac can actually handle about 4K 60 and uh, the MacBook Pro, the new one with the eight core processor can go about 44 frames per second. So you have some, a little bit of overhead over 4K 30. Uh, still, I would much prefer having the iMac for this scenario. And now finally, let's take a look at 4.5K red raw footage from the Raven. Here in Final Cut, once again, we have a five minute project with a couple of LUTs, some color corrections. Uh, Final Cut's 45% faster if you're using the iMac. And in DaVinci Resolve, the iMac is more than twice as fast. And then in Premiere Pro, it's actually three times as fast. Now those are absolutely crazy results. I don't have a super great explanation for this other than this codec. Uh, if you have some color corrections, really pushes everything to the limits. The CPU is pushed, uh, the graphics is pushed, and we were, when we're combining you know, full CPU usage, full graphics usage, I mean, this thing is really shining. So for red footage, absolutely no doubt about it, you wanna have the iMac unless you absolutely need portability. Now, if you need to edit this red footage on a MacBook Pro in Final Cut, you can't play it back at full resolution. It is way too choppy. You have to go down to better playback. Now, in DaVinci Resolve, uh, surprisingly, the MacBook can actually play back the footage uh, at about 24 frames per second. And uh, same thing goes with Premiere Pro. That thing, you might need to drop it down to like half, uh, but it still looks pretty good and it plays back better than Final Cut. Of course, the iMac does a better job. We can see the scores are much better, um, but sadly, Final Cut is actually the worst if you want to be you know, editing Red Raw on your MacBook Pro. So there you guys have it. In some cases, like raw footage, the iMac is way more powerful. And then if you're working with regular H.264 4K footage, like a lot of us are, both of these systems are more than powerful enough to be able to handle this. And in that case, uh, if you want the portability, I would say go with the MacBook Pro. So there you guys have it. I have all those results. Um, unfortunately, the MacBook Pro isn't as fast as I 
I thought it was gonna be in the past. It was actually closer when we looked at like the 2018 MacBook Pros versus 2017 iMacs. But now that we have this i9 Visa machine that can actually overtake the iMac Pro in a lot of use cases, if you guys don't believe me, you guys can check out the video linked in the video description. Uh, and the MacBook Pro is still with Vega 20 graphics. That's its biggest limitation. Um, the iMac really comes ahead in a lot of ways and they both have similar price points. So if you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comment section below. I definitely wanna hear uh, your thoughts, your opinions, and I'll try to answer the questions if I can. Once again, I have links to both of these down in the description below. If you guys are gonna pick it up, please use my links. It definitely supports it and makes these kind of videos possible. And another big shout out to Audible for sponsoring the channel uh, and this video. I definitely appreciate it and it helps out to be able to buy machines like this and test them out and put all that time and effort into it. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Max and I will see you in the next video.